Welcome to the Your Little Castle Show, where we highlight the best experts that make your home into your little castle. Let's go! Often do we have very, uh, I would say talented and successful, <laughs> <clears throat> influential, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get up for my good friend John Parker. He is in <laughs> studio here with us in the Euro Little Castle studio. Welcome to the studio, John. How are you, man? Doing great. I haven't seen you I'll for you what, a few this weeks. Is, I'm just looking at your studio. This is great. I mean, uh, if you guys ever get a chance to, to come on the show or, or be on the show, uh, you're going to be mesmerized by what's in front of you. I mean, this is, uh, this is a pretty good setup. We did a little upgrade just for you. That a little 46-inch monitor makes it easier for yeah, all of us Yeah, Best Buy looks like they ran out of some, <laughs> some inventory here, uh, like on one swoop. Right? Just, uh, <laughs> looks really nice. We do have a lot of fun here. I remember those days when Randy Gardner and I had a show. And, I mean, we used to... We, we had stock in black and Decker because we had some of the orange cords running through the ceiling. Right. It, was, it was crazy. We had a good time. Then. I, I do recall. That's where I think we first uh, introduced ourselves. We had a great time then, doing oh, no, that show. On, the, on those shows that they had. Uh, being the Cardinal Cowboy, I'll put the hat on here. The <laughs> Absolutely. This is the brand on. new hat. Got to put the hat this on. This is a gift from one of our sponsors for Cardinal Cowboy. Just celebrated his 40th birthday. That's because I started doing this when I was 10. Right. <laughs> so it was actually the big 5-0. But uh, I, I get pretty excited if you will about st louis with regard to that those kinds of issues i mean when it comes down to it we have a city here that we need to make sure has all features that everybody that lives here well it, needs to have a functioning city to make sure everybody i exists, absolutely right? is agree that, is, that, is that part of the problem we've I, run into every city well, has a problem, i think I we've think. we've run into a problem where our, our mindset uh with the city with, with the city of st louis in competition with the Nashvilles and the Kansas Cities and the Indianapolises of the world, um, we've been passed by. Uh, and that's only because we've chosen to, to allow ourselves to be passed by. Um, I visit those cities. Uh, my, 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 I mean, my grandson lives in Nashville, and I'm down there once a month. And the only thing I see down there in downtown Nashville is cranes and things going up and, and the economic development of that city is just exploding and there's no reason in the world why the city of St. Louis, why the city of St. Louis can't be on that same page. But uh, I think our mindset uh, for the city has set us back. Uh, I think our, our crime issues, our law enforcement issues have set us back and we've got to, it's, it's just time to reinvent the city of St. Louis. And uh, like I said, I think uh, I think I'm the guy to get that done. Well, somebody I know I know that gets things done. That's for sure. We've <laughs> we've talked many times about business, uh, then obviously about sports. Uh, I remember walking in. I'm like, I know we're buddies, but <laughs> you know, and I know that I'm not getting put on this team, and I don't want to be on this team unless I am the best kicker in this situation. And, and we had some fun with that. Well, we did, and uh, and that it, was part of an economic thing. And it's, it is an economic thing, and I and I believe that. You know, when people have asked me, how would you how would you run the city? You know, how would how would you staff things? Yeah, Evolution, Evolution St. Louis, Louis is our is the company. We are a high tech manufacturing company. We are, uh, if you've heard of three D printing, we do three D knitting. Okay, and what we're doing is bring high tech manufacturing to the city of St. Louis. Uh, we do a lot of fashion. Uh, uh, items, a lot of fashion apparel, but we also do a lot of technical, uh, we have a technical division where we'll make, uh, we make products for Tesla. Uh, we make products for the military. Some of those things I can't talk about because right. Homeland Security would be banging on their doors, but uh, uh, we make medical devices. Um, we're bringing high tech, a, a, a form of high tech manufacturing back to the city of St. Louis. And we believe that we can grow this industry sector right here in the city of St. Louis. There was one point in time where St. Louis was only second to New York in the fashion industry. And all of those jobs be began to go away when people figured out that they could do stuff cheaper overseas. But now we're figuring out and it didn't take a global pandemic to prove our business model, but it sure helped because <laughs> when people couldn't right. get things from overseas, our phone was ringing off the hook for us to make them. And those same customers have decided to stay with us now. So it's a, it's, it's a great industry. But we have to bring technology into the city of St. Louis. There's no reason why you can't drive around downtown, look at your smartphone, and find a parking space. There's no reason why that can't happen. The technology's there. The technology's there. And it's there in other cities. Why isn't it here? You know? Well, is that going to go back to your candidacy for mayor? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of 
th those kinds of things that need to get done don't get done unless there's somebody leading that charge. Because, exactly. Because running a city um, inclu includes collaboration from a lot of people and somebody like yourself, but also having that insight. You've got that insight. I, from what I understand and know you for, you know where there's a time to say, this is st a strategic thing that needs to be put into place for these reasons and you make it happen. Is that, is that where you That's feel like exactly you've got right. the... exactly right. People have to understand, companies around the country have to understand, and this is part of the platform, is that I would have in my administration a certain sector of, of individuals who their job is to do nothing but recruit companies back to St. Louis. That's their only job. And I want companies that have factories because if you're bringing factories, now we're creating jobs. We're, bring, we're putting people back to work. That's one. Two, from a technology standpoint, you know, I'm sure that the citizens of the St. Louis, of the city of St. Louis, they would love to be able to go to one single website and be able to take care of every single one of their services. Why is that not possible in St. Louis when it's possible in every other city in the country? <laughs> Big issues that uh, make an impact. This technology thing, this uh, internet thing. And that, that is, all is, relates is catching to, on. Yeah, I mean, well, it all relates I mean, to economic development. If you can make things easier and make, make, make the price of doing business in the city of St. Louis easier, why wouldn't companies want to come here? We are uh, 500 miles from one third of the country. People don't realize that. Sitting in St. Louis, you're, fi you're within 500 miles of one third of the population of the city of St. Louis. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize we are favoring the East Coast a little bit there right. with regard to, and I've looked at a map and, and even mapped out some of these drives. You can be in North Carolina in seven or eight hours total, I think, drive time in that, in that ballpark, Florida, uh, and then Boston and Maine. I mean, we're, they say we're the gateway to the West, but that's literally because we're at the edge of the, of right. the, of the West, not in the middle of the West. Right. A lot of people think we're Midwest. Uh, some people refer to as flyover country, but we've got a lot to fly over here. Well, because there's a of, lot to fly over. And, and we've got so much that we, I, mean, I love talking about the economic impact with regard to my favorite St. Louis Cardinals. And, yeah, and, well. And the things that they bring to, to, and, to town. And, and people know us as a saying? sports town. Uh, there's no question. I mean, we got a new soccer team coming in. The Cardinals are, are always going to be the Cardinals. They're, they're you know, phen a phenomenal organization. And what they've done for the city of St. Louis has is, is, is always been great, you know. I was disappointed to see the Rams go, see the Rams go, but bringing a new soccer stadium, we've got the Blues, we've got the Cardinals, and I'll tell you one other thing I'd love to bring here. I would love to bring an NBA team here. I think it would be a phenomenal deal. We, yeah, the, the one thing in the city of St. Louis that gets a little difficult with people is when you start building things, the two words that people don't like to hear are construction and new. <laughs> <laughs> because they think there's, that, that there's going to be an increase in taxes and things like that. But I've looked at the process of bringing an NBA team here. Do you realize that we have a larger television market than nine current NBA teams? Okay. I, I believe that. And Trying to get realize. a team to move here, you know, if you put together the right proposal and you're sitting right in the middle of the country, you have a thousand different uh, uh, proposals that you could put together that could be very appealing to bring an NBA team here, which is more revenue because we have a big place for them to play already that's not being used very often. Right. So if Enterprise. you can, you know, we can, oh, or the dome. Or the dome. You can, read the, yeah, you the can dome. redevelop okay. the, the dome, and now instead of eight games that you have with the NFL, you get 41. That's, that means every, okay. all those mom-and-pop restaurants that were downtown, they all get to reopen again. People have to understand that this is not – a sprint. This is a marathon. If you look at my platform, my platform is a 12-year plan. It's not a it's not a three-year plan or a four-year plan. It's not a one-term plan. It's a 12-year plan because it's going to take that long. It takes very very little time to tear something down, but it takes a long time to build it back up. If you're looking at a 12 to 15-year plan, 50 uh, 15 year, old, uh, year plan to redevelop the city of St. Louis in 12 years. We'll be right where we need to be, and in 15, we will have exceeded it. Talk a little bit, because I've seen some of this growth in other cities, particularly Nashville, yes. which has gone from, like you said, a, a city that kind of on the edge, and right. then all of a sudden, it is like the mecca for country music. It's a, it's a mecca for all. They've got every sport It's a out, mecca for outside. all music. I mean, country music, and, I, and, and I, having lived there for eight years, I was at, okay. at Cumberland University, and I was at Tennessee State University, and having lived there for eight years, I can tell you where Nashville was and looking at it now, and it's in the same situation that St. Louis was when it started this redevelopment. 
and you go down in downtown Nashville now, there's no reason for people who have been to Nashville many, many times that Broadway in Nashville couldn't resemble Washington Avenue. Very, very it, it, it's the same setup. You've got a stadium at one end, and you've got a whole block that's nothing but bars and restaurants and, and, and clubs and, and nightlife. And where you have all this open space, there's no reason that you can't have a population of entertainment right there. And the one thing about Broadway in Nashville, you can't drive down that street on a Friday and Saturday night. It's blocked off. It's just a big block entertainment area. The same way Washington Avenue used to be 15 years ago. Right here in St. Louis. How long did it take to tear it down? Not very long, but it'll take a little while to get it back up and rolling. Well, some great points you make there. And I'd say it's a matter of there's all sides of life that you need to, to cover there because you've got the nightlife. You've sure. got, you got to have the jobs, obviously. And, and uh, the economic development kind of stems from all but of that. But the first thing and, has and, to happen. It has to be safe. And I was going to say, what about being safe? It has and to be safe. How do you make sure that you manage something so well, that we have a city that is known for safety? Where a lot of cities, and I won't say anything specific about anybody, but I mean, we have struggled with some uh, of the excitement that everybody deals with. Right. But how do you make sure that St. Louis is known well, as a safe city? And what are the steps that have to take place to make that happen? Unlike a lot of people who are probably going to be running for this office, I am a proponent of law enforcement a big proponent of law enforcement because I want I want a presence. If you go to these other cities, if you go to downtown Nashville and you go to downtown Indianapolis and you go to Kansas City, in those downtown areas, there is a po there is a law enforcement presence and that is a determinant just because they're there. So right now we have a shortage of police officers. No, there's no question. Do I have a plan for policing that I would love to sit down with, with this chief or the next chief or whoever that chief of police is going to be or that director of public safety is going to be? I want to sit down with them and have this all mapped out so that the first day we step in the office, things get changed. Now, when it comes to policing, I want more, but I also want better policing. Why is it that all police officers aren't wearing body cameras? Okay, and I don't want to hear about this budget thing because right now we're probably sitting on close to a billion dollars. Okay, between the the buyback plan that we the money that we received and the money that we're supposed to be we're get, we're getting back from the Rams, there's money there. We need to infuse more into the law enforcement budget so we can get not only more police officers, but better policing. I want beat cops again. I want guys walking up and down the street, getting to know people, getting to know business owners, and getting to know those communities. Because I, I'm a firm believer that if you take care of the community, the community is going to take care of you. So that's that's my plan on policing. Well, it is <laughs> one it, of my plans it, on well, policing. <laughs> it, it, it all ties together because absolutely it, we've had uh, we had a, assistant uh, U.S. attorney. Rodney Holmes in studio here, mm -hmm. if you know Rodney. And uh, we talked about it. The, the number one most important thing for most people is safety. Absolutely. When you talk about Maslow's, and not to get too techy on people here, some people were taught this in school. I, I, they taught it. I went to Lutheran South, a lot of people. So we, we covered everything. But um, with regard to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the most elementary is it's safety, food and safety. Right. If you don't have those two, those, those two combined into the most basic, you have to have that first. And if you don't have that, then you've got people that are very upset and they're causing havoc because they want, they need to survive, right? It's a survival thing. And it's just kind of basic. So I don't understand the strategies. That, uh, and it's a matter of, I don't want to get into the political side of it too much at all, but it's just, we, that's an elementary piece that we have to have. Once you've got that, now economic development comes around. Well, if Businesses you guys want to be part people of what you understand got, it, 80% of, of crime, 80% of crime is based on desperation. It's not based on just, you know, just 80% of the people who commit crime are, they're not horribly bad people. Right. It's just desperation. And if you know, it's human nature, if you don't have what you need to have to take care of you and yours, you're going to do whatever you have to, to get what you need to take care of you and yours. And so that's, that's that, it. and 80% of crime is, is simply out of desperation. But if we can change the economic development model, of how we do things in the city of St. Louis, starting first with making this place 
very, very safe. To, so that when people come to St. Louis, the people who live in St. Louis, they understand if you break the law, you're going to be punished. Simple as that. If you break the law, you're going to be punished. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Well, that seems it. pretty, okay. pretty basic to just the function of Well, this goes back to my coaching days because I only had three rules. Do what you're supposed to do, be where you're supposed to be, and be there on time. And if you think about it, when you were a kid, anytime you ever got in trouble, one of those three things went sideways. <laughs> you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing, you were someplace you weren't supposed to be, or you were late. That was it. Okay? And it, I think the more laws that you create and the more ordinances that you create, if you've got one law, you got 200 loopholes in that law. Okay, and if you don't create all of these ordinances and you keep things very simple, if you break the law, you're going to get punished. Simple as that. This is going to be a safe city for everybody, for people to feel safe. And, and here's the thing. The people who are running around, and I've noticed this, and I think you've noticed this. Most of the people who are running around screaming to fund the police, take the money away, get more counselors on that. The people who are screaming that are the least vulnerable people on the planet, okay? <laughs> right. Because I was born in North St. Louis, all right? I know a lot of people who live in North St. Louis, and I can tell you not a single person I know in North St. Louis is telling me they want less policing, okay? <laughs> right, right. They want more. They want a police presence so that they can feel safe, and that's the only way we're ever going to feel safe in the city is if we increase law enforcement in the city. And along those lines, because it's not just a matter of punishment per se for the for the sake of punishment. Oh, sure. It's a matter of rehabilitation, I think, and, exactly. and providing resources. And that's part of, tell us what kind of a perspective do you have towards that? I've got some ideas. We have Wesley Bell on our show, mm -hmm. uh, on the Cowboy and Judge show not long ago. And I, I mentioned straight up to him, I said, Wesley, I, as a techie nerd, somebody who's done social media, internet, marketing, uh, going back to Anna Bush for 10 years and the email team there, and uh, all, of, all of the uh, management of their systems, and then onto you know, doing reach locals, Google marketing and advertising stuff that you and I met and talked mm -hmm. about. I, I end up being the number one guy in the company. I have about 500 sales reps because I have a mind that thinks this way. And I got into where like, the, the, to understand this technology and to actually be able to help businesses with it is not so complicated. It doesn't require a four year degree. I, I, my dad was a college admissions counselor for 53 years, but the colleges have not been able to keep up with that as much. And what ends up happening is by the time you've got a college degree that... Um, you don't know anything. Yeah, you're, you're already outdated. But I know that as a technical person that I could teach kids within a few weeks, hey, you just got out of your, your stint in the, in, the, in, the, in the little jail cell that you had to spend some time in to get your head straight and teach you that you can't operate that way. But now we're going to not just throw you back out on the street. We're going to say, you're required to go to this training. That's going to sure. help you. And you can paint that vision. I think a lot of times part of somebody who's been a representative for some of the biggest companies in the, in the country with regard to marketing and all that. My, one, of, one of the things I have to convey is how, how some of these things can be done. Well, and talk about how can they this. could be implemented, those kinds of strategies can be put in place. When, when people who have been incarcerated, the majority of those folks, when they come out, don't want to go back, don't have intentions of going back. Yeah, that's not a, what and they again, want And it becomes a desperation thing. I know we, at, at, at Evolution, we've begun to lead the charge on this. We hire, a, a, many of our employees, have, are, 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 we work with the, with the correction system in the state of Missouri, and we've hired many, many people at Evolution who have been incarcerated. And they are good workers, they come to work every day, they're, they're, they're doing everything possible Get, uh, to, to try and not go back into that lifestyle that they had. And one of the things we do is we offer a sustainable job with a sustainable wage. We try and cover their, uh, well, not even try, we cover their benefits. Anybody who works for Evolution, you get free benefits. I mean, we pay your medical, we pay your dental, we pay your vision. And, and as long as you're a full-time employee and you know our jobs are 17, 18, $20 an hour. You know, I, I, I may be on a recruiting trip here right now, but, uh, <laughs> right? but, but those Nothing are the jobs. And, and I think that if we can get, this is where economic development with regard to, to, to manufacturing positions, if we can get companies to come back to St. Louis, come, come here to the middle of the country, do business cheaper than you can do business on the East Coast or the West Coast, come right back here. If we can start to lure those companies back 
with with economic development, trains going up, factories going up, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Some airline is going to smarten up and they're going to put a hub out here because why would you not want a hub in the center of the country that's within 500 miles of one third of the population? Absolutely, it's going to happen. And that is why a lot of people realize, don't realize, we're, I think we're a hidden gem with regard to oh, cost of housing, real estate. Absolutely. I mean, just the people are buying. I, I'm involved in the real estate industry, obviously, with what I've done with marketing. And I've got my my license for related stuff we won't talk about in depth because then i gotta get all kinds of stuff we got to put up for the yeah uh, purposes of, of all that and we can we can do this fine print running fine across print the bottom print. of the page there <laughs> but but literally i mean st louis has so much to offer that most people it these, does. these these business owners are, are wealthy people out on the coast are coming and buying houses in st louis because right. the economic value and they can get a house here for two hundred thousand dollars that's you know two thousand square feet versus a 1,100 square foot house for right. $600,000 right. on either one of the coasts. So, I mean, from a hiring standpoint, we're doing that. We're also, I'll tell you something else we do in evolution. We hire homeless veterans. I mean, I, I work with wow. St. Patrick's Center. I, we had a job fair there. And just, just, I mean, short story. I'm walking into the job fair. I stepped over a guy who was sleeping on the street right outside the door. Five minutes later, he's standing in front of me. He hands me a 17 page resume. This guy knows every computer program on the planet, but he's, he fell on hard times a couple of years ago, and this is where he was. We hired him the next day. He's now, he got a place to live. He's making a, a great wage. He's getting free benefits. These are the capital people, and, and I talked to six people that day. I hired five of them. So, I mean, we're, we're doing everything we possibly can to not only help with the job situation in the workforce in the city of St. Louis, but to bring back high-tech manufacturing, which is, again, part of the economic development plan of not only Evolution, but me as a candidate for mayor. I want to I bring this and, and reinvent the city of St. Louis again and make it, one, safe, make it an economic development hub and that's built around technology and a, and a technical workforce that makes this very attractive for people to come right here. And there's no reason that we can't be in front of the Nashvilles and the Kansas Cities and the Indianapolises and the Columbus, uh, Ohio's of the world. Well, it seems like we're on the right path. Behind us on the wall, again, everybody, you can see there is evolutionstl.com. Evolution. Beautiful website. We've talked quite a bit about it there. I wanted to give everybody the opportunity to, to see what we're talking about there. But this is an amazing company with regard to the technology side. I was, yes. I, I'm a techie nerd, and I know they have fabric out there <laughs> that uh, can, can be part of your... Uh, DNA, if you will, yeah. to help you not because they integrate it into your body system. But I know you're gonna Brooke, Brooke Dublin's gonna get mad, but we <laughs> but we make uh, we make the furniture coverings for for Ashley Brooke. Sorry, man. <laughs> I mean, we can make it for you too, but yeah, well, we make the furniture coverings. Good for Ashley. point. We have one of our biggest sponsors <laughs> is Carol House. You love hey Brooke. Let's talk about what, Brooke. I like nice things, man. I do believe me, but we make the furniture coverings and Brooke for is Ashley. A, is a great guy. Brooke, he's a great guy. He'll appreciate that. <laughs> but literally, I mean. The technology that you guys are putting in place here is absolutely amazing. I, I, mean, absolutely. I didn't realize this is the latest venture you've been on for a while the, now. The company has been in St. Louis now for about three years. It's a brand new company. They were in New York City, and they were on the, actually on their way to Detroit with the company. They were moving out of New York, and at the last minute, uh, everybody said, don't sign a thing. And I was still with the city at that point in time, and we moved them here, moved into Grand Center, uh, you know, they, they were, you know, it's so expensive to do business in New York City. They got here, they got a, a building, they're leasing a building, I got a 30 year lease on a building for uh, five bucks a square foot, which is like free compared yeah. to New York. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, this company, uh, it's a 32,000 32, square foot building right now. They've also leased a brand new facility on the North Riverfront that's, you know, 150, 160,000 square feet. We've got 32 of these latest machines that are basically th uh, 3D knitting machines. And we'll have 50 by the end of the summer. In the new building, there'll be 200 more. Um, and that'll be a, a, an, an entire technical division of evolution. We'll still have the apparel business of sweaters and, and shoe uppers and things like that. But our military, our high tech stuff, our medical braces, uh, our parts for, for Tesla, our parts for GM, things like that, will all come out of the factory down on the riverfront. And which is another opportunity zone, which means if you invest in, in real estate on that area in an opportunity zone, you hold on to that stuff for 10 years, you never pay taxes on it. It's great. 
<laughs> All right, so St. Louis is a is a, There's more, a great. This it, is a it, great it, city to do business in. But we have to make it safe. If it's safe, then it becomes attractive. It becomes way more attractive as long as the safety issue is taken care of. That's for sure. And we have to address the safety issue first. Um, the coach, John Parker, uh, the coach, John Parker dot com. And literally, I mean, you've got a history of coaching there that is yes. really to be rivaled by few. I mean, Andy Reid uh, doesn't have much on you, I don't think, <laughs> with regard, uh, other than a Super Bowl championship. Yeah, or yeah two. well, he's, yeah, he's, Andy's been around for a while now. And uh, I, I, in fact, I remember when Andy was the offensive line coach at Mizzou. At Mizzou, a lot many, of people don't many, realize many that. Many years ago, many years ago, under Coach Bob Stoll. Uh, he was the offensive line coach. Uh, I remember, Andy and I have been friends a long, long time. A very long time. Well, Longer than probably he and I want to talk about how long. So, yeah. <laughs> well, in that background, as a, ourselves. <laughs> as a uh, football coach, a keynote speaker, I mean, a lot that you've done there. There is just so much that uh, John Parker brings to the plate here to help our community. And I, I know there's an exciting event coming up in about 30 days. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about uh, that. I, if I don't, I'll, I, it may not come <laughs> up. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be uh, uh, celebrating my nuptials in 30 Absolutely. days uh, to uh, an extraordinary woman. Uh, Nancy's just, uh, she's been a godsend. So uh, uh, it's, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Although American Express is probably going to have a hitman looking for me when it's all <laughs> over. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, the wedding is in 30 days. 30 days from today, actually, yes. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I want to give you a shout-out with regard to that because I know that that's a, it's a big moment in people's life. And uh, I won't be at the actual wedding. Plenty you'll be at the, you'll come into the Ritz. I'll, I'll be at the Ritz yes. for the reception. I, I just said the I'll Ritz. Say, that means about, what, mil a million people are going to show up to the Ritz? <laughs> right, yeah. Everybody be careful yeah. for that part. Yeah, there's a be, reception at the Ritz on at 5 o'clock on, on, on June 11th. And, uh, you know, ch uh, let's see, uh, charge all your drinks to Brooke Dubbin. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Brooke, <laughs> Brooke's, Brooke has got a card on file. Just walk to the bar and say, all drinks are on Brooke Dubman. Brooke, Brooke I'll make sure. I, I know that uh, he, he's a big supporter, too, so he would probably be all right with us having a little fun there, uh, and he can contribute to that. I, Brooke, I'm not trying to throw it, but, I mean, you're, you're – we know you. We love Brooke. He's a we love, I guy. Love, he's a great guy. Great and great a lot guy. to help St. Louis and a uh, big influence. So, again, here it is, everybody. Parker for STL, Parker for STL .com. You know, I just want people to go to the website and see, read the platform. If you'd like to contribute, that's great, but I don't ever ask anybody to contribute without, without knowing the person, without knowing the platform. If you like the platform, you know, we, we accept your contributions and that would be wonderful. Also, we have a pact if anybody wants to do, uh, contribute to the pack, and the pack it goes out to everybody, but the pack is, is called the Promise for St. Louis. So if you can go to you can go to Promise for STL also, you can contribute to the pack. So if you'd like to do that, that money gets dispersed out to a lot of different candidates. Okay, So well, that's great. But we appreciate it. Awesome, everybody, thanks for tuning in again for, for another episode of the Your Little Castle Show, where we're gonna highlight leaders in the community and those people that are making an impact. So continue to tune in, go to yourlittlecastle.com, and we look forward to sharing more of the excitement what's going on in this city. So again, Carter Ruthers, Cardinal Cowboy, everybody. We'll be back for more. Stay tuned. This is the Your Little Castle Show, and uh, we love highlighting our leaders. So let us know anybody you know that deserves to be highlighted, and we will talk more about it. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned for more. Giddy up. <laughs>